Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About today. We're doing something unique today. We're actually going to be testing our water. Uh, this is a great video to learn about how to test your parameters, what to look for whenever things are getting a little high, and also just a good brand to go with. Today we're actually going to be looking at the API Master Test Kit, which comes with our four main ones. We're going to have the ammonia test, the nitrate test, the nitrites, high range pH, and then also not included in the kit but bought separately, we're going to test our calcium and our KH. Now looking through the tank right now, you can tell we're definitely having a hair algae problem. Our water is definitely low, so we will need to top it off as well. Now at times I usually don't try to get rid of all my hair algae, mainly because I have urchins swimming around in there and also tangs that run around and they eat that as their natural food source. I like to still keep some in there, but right now it's definitely taking over a little too much for my comfortability. Now, even though you are seeing a ton of hair algae and the water being low, looking around at the corals, everyone's looking pretty great and pretty good so far. Now, looping back to the test kit, you will also have a test sheet that will actually give you the colorations that the liquid can turn so that you can best tell what level is your water actually at parts per million. So first up, we're just going to get a sample of water straight from the tank. Usually I'll just put the test tube in the water if I know it's clean. If not, I'll usually scoop out some water into a bowl and then I can put the water into the test tube. Now what's nice about these API test tubes is they have a nice little line right in the middle of them. They'll tell you how high to fill the water up to. I'm just a little shot off, but I'm going to keep it and you should be fine. Now, one thing to always be doing before you actually put this into the test sample is shake it up. Shake it up for about 15 seconds on each bottle. That way it mixes up that solution really well to give you the best accurate test. So first up, we are going to be testing our ammonia. Looking right on bottle number one, got to add eight drops to the test tube. So whenever these are fresh bottles, definitely don't even apply a little bit of pressure because sometimes those drops will come out quick. So take your time, drop it in there, count your eight drops on the first bottle. Now, if you are to ever drop more than what it says on the bottle, if it's off by one, that's usually okay. If it's more than one, you know, you start dropping two to three extra drops in there, I'd probably do away with that water and redo it. So once we put... Eight drops of bottle number one, we're shaking it up for about 10 seconds, putting the cap off and dropping in the next bottle, bottle number two, at eight drops. Now once we put these in here, we'll definitely start to see a more coloration, and especially whenever we shake it up. Ammonia is probably the one that has to sit the longest, in my experience, to actually change to a certain color, so give it some time once you put it in there, shake it up, let it sit. And so right now we can already see it has a bit of a yellowish coloration right now. We're going to speed up the clock and let it sit for about 30 seconds. All right, so we're going to pull it up up against our card and you can see it is pretty yellow. It's right on, I would say, zero, maybe just a little higher, um, but nothing over 0.25. So that's some really good ammonia right there. A lot of times overfeeding can definitely spike up that ammonia. Also not doing your water changes can also raise it up. So make sure to keep up with that. If you are starting to get too green, that can be very dangerous for your fish. So make sure you do have some good clean water you can do a water change with. Next up, we're gonna do our nitrates. So with this much hair algae growing in the tank, it can kind of go either way. A lot of times people will come in the shop and say, you know, Hair algae is growing everywhere. I'm sure my water levels are being crazy high. And then we'll test the water and it's actually zeroed out. And that's usually because that hair algae will actually eat the nutrients in your tank. So it's constantly feeding on the nutrients. So while the test looks zero, you can actually make some changes. So first bottle, we're going to be adding 10 drops of the solution, which is usually a bright yellow color. 
course, don't forget to shake them up before you pour it in there. That'll give you the most accurate test. Make sure to count your drops. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now put the top on and shake it up. Usually I always try to shake it up in between bottles. I don't like to mix both bottles at the same time before shaking it up usually get a more accurate test doing in between. See if we start to see a little bit more orange or if we do stay in that good yellow range like we want. High nitrates can definitely mean you have too much nutrients in the tank from feeding, from just fish digesting, and also feeding your corals. Just overall waste can definitely bring the levels up, so you definitely want to keep them low. So we'll speed the clock up here and see if we get any color changes. All right, so if we grab our little card, we're seeing a good color. It's not that bright, bright yellow. We're a little lower, I would say, maybe at the five, but not any higher. So we're still looking good there, but a good water change, 20% water change will take care of that and put it right back up into the sunny yellow color. Now, once we get our next test tube ready, we're going to be testing the high range pH. So this one, we're usually trying to hit 8.1 to 8.4 in a saltwater tank. You definitely want to keep it in that range to keep your corals healthy. On the bottle, it's real simple. Just add five drops, shake it up, and we'll see what coloration we get. We'll put the cap on, give it a good shake. And this one usually changes pretty quick for us, but we'll still let it sit just in case. All right, it's been sitting long enough. Let's try to get our card and let's see where we're hitting. So we're really looking at a light purple, more of a brown coloration. I'd give it an 8.0 on this test. Definitely want a higher range pH in my tank with the reefs. I definitely want to try to raise it up the next time I do some chemical dosing and my water change. So what I can usually do is buy a chemical just to pour into the tank that will actually help it raise it up to the 8.2 to 8.4 range. Now we're going to test our nitrite. This is another easy one. Add five drops of the solution, shake it up, and you'll be good to go. We're looking for a very bright, bright blue coloration to show that our levels are looking okay. This is also one that will change pretty quick for us, but we'll still shake it up and give it about a 30 second wait before we really judge on what coloration it's going to be. All right, so if we pick it up and put it against our card, we're looking pretty good. I would say it's in the range of 0 0.25. Um, usually you have almost a see-through blue. I can see a little bit of darkness in this one. So usually it's just because the nutrients are high, but a good water change will help bring it down to zero. Now next up, we're actually going to be doing the calcium. So calcium's test will work a little differently. We'll have to actually count the drops very specifically. So on bottle number one, it's real simple. Just add your 10 drops first. And then you can shake the test tube up. And then on bottle number two, the directions get a little bit more specific. So usually in my reef tank, I expect it to have a calcium level of 300 or higher. So a little trick I can do is adding the drops five at a time and then shaking in between. Because once I get to 15 total drops, that'll say that my tank is at least 300. So whenever you do the calcium on bottle number two, each drop stands for 20. And so you'll have to keep up with that, multiply it by how many drops you got, and that'll give you your total range 
we're wanting to hit at least 400 in a reef tank especially usually at mine sitting at about 420 so it's a little bit higher so once i shake this one up just to save time doing 21 drops one at a time can definitely take a little while so that's definitely why i like to do the five at a time trick until 15 and then after having 15 drops i'll go back down to one drop at a time calcium can definitely come up and down depending on how your reef is dealing with it most of the time though if your calcium gets too low you can get some different chemicals like reef code a and b I think there's a lot of them out there that you can get. Most are pretty decent to raise the levels up that you can dose into your tank. We'll add our second set of five, and we're looking at a nice pink coloration, which is what we want. It'll stay this pink coloration, and then once you actually hit the exact number that your calcium level is, it'll turn this deep, deep blue color, and it was very noticeable by the, by the eye. We'll add our last set of five in, and then after this, we'll start doing it one at a time. So we'll speed this up a little bit. We're at 21 drops now, and it's still a pink coloration. You can see it getting darker, but I'm telling you, once it actually changes to that deep blue, you'll definitely notice it. So we're going to keep going. Looks like my calcium is doing pretty solid nowadays. Here comes number 22. And it still hasn't made that drastic change yet, so we might be sitting right at a 23, which is still a really solid calcium level, especially for how many corals I have in that 70 gallon reef. Here comes 23. And we're hoping to see, boom, that's perfect. So now you can see it is definitely, definitely a drastic change in coloration. You see that deep, deep blue now, and that is perfect. So we're sitting at 23 drops through your 23 times 20, which gives you a calcium level of 460. So it's pretty high, but that's okay. Once I do my water change as well, that usually will drop it down a little bit just because you're taking out water and putting new in. But usually I try to keep mine at at least 420. Now on the flip side of it, if you do have too high of calcium, usually the best thing to do is just stop dosing any kind of calcium products you have. And then also just do your water changes because putting that fresh salt water in usually doesn't have as much of a level of calcium that you're looking at. So that'll help bring it down as well. Now last on our list is KH. So this one works a little differently too. You add one drop at a time and count it. So your KH is usually wanting to hit eight to 12. So just like in this test, we're gonna try to hit eight to 12 drops. Now usually I don't do any tricks with this one. On the first, I actually did accidentally put two in, but that's okay. We're gonna count our two drops and we're gonna speed it up a little bit and see how many drops it takes. The coloration you're gonna see is a very light, light blue and it's gonna drastically change to a yellow. This is our seventh drop that we're putting in. We'll shake it up. When you can see it did change a little bit, we're gonna check it out and it still has that little bit of blue coloration to it. We want that real bright, bright yellow. We're gonna go and it's probably gonna be hitting right on eight. Just still a good KH to have. Usually if you have more SPS corals in your tank, you wanna to try to get it higher. And I'll definitely try to get mine a little bit higher so I'm not just sitting on eight, probably try to hit 10 to 12, which you can usually do by dosing some chemicals to help you out. But that's it right there. That's that bright yellow we were looking for. That puts us right on a level of eight for our carbon hardness. Now we also have this Aquarium Solutions Ocuprobe that we use to test salinity. It's a real easy test to use. It's real simple. You just dunk it in the water, fill it up, set it on the counter and let it find its spot. Now you can see my level is hitting 1.028, which is definitely high for me. I usually like to keep mine on 2.4 
and you can tell it is this high because my water has evaporated so much. So this is a big issue people have when doing water changes is they'll think, oh, okay, I'll take 15 out, but then just fill it up 20 more gallons with salt water. And so you actually end up adding five more gallons of salt water, which can really hurt and raise your salinity up even more to a dangerous level. So that's why I always try to recommend people take out as much as you put in and then use that top off water to fill it up to the rest that it needs to go. That way your salinity stays the same or in my case, I actually need it to lower a bit. So once I added that fresh water, tested it again, I was hitting right on two four. So that was perfect. Now, another thing you can use is a refractometer to test your salinity. This is almost like a little telescope looking thing that you put a drop of water on. That will give you the most accurate salinity testing. They are very cool to use and they will give you a very accurate reading each time that you test your salinity. Now that's everything you need to know about using this little saltwater test kit. Most other brands of saltwater test kits work relatively the same way. So I hope you learned a little something in this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also check out my other videos. We got tons of them out there. How to do water changes, how to take care of corals, how to take care of fish. And as always, I hope y'all have a wonderful week and I will talk to y'all later. Hey everybody, it's Brock and today's video is sponsored by Dream Team Forever. Make sure to check out our website as we just released the first ever All About Tees that feature 30 fish and inverts from the series. Click the link in the description to get some for you and your family.